it's Wednesday. You have some free time. It's your next class. What do you do? I need to get my strength up. It's Billy again. What's up, my man? So the fourth meeting must be done in class. I'm not sure if that means I have to go to the classroom or during one of my actual classes. Uh, this one's going to go to class for now. Did you like to approach? I have so many people on lockdown. Let's just talk to Siri as usual. See if it works up that whole like, okay, it seems like this is probably the fourth meeting then. It seems like clockwork at this point, but you found yourself to be rather good at shadowing individuals. Though the likes of no one in particular is actually a bit difficult to find in contrast to his intact and agoni agonizing persona. You find managed to find him. You find managed to find him. And you pause like the perceptive shadow you are to observe him thoroughly. After all, pigs may have flown up the side of him in an apron from cooking, but hell hath frozen over when you're pretty sure you've just caught him studying. A burst of laughter threatens the surface, but you run in and tease him as a plus one. Oh, the requirement needs to be moderate charisma. Let's see if this is enough. I do not. I guess I just make myself known. As much as tortures you, you're afraid from dealing serious comeuppance. Despite all those conversations of him poking jabs at you, you decide to withhold, a mercy if you will. Politely, you knock several raps against the door and you watch the anima immediately goes rigid before spotting you. Chaos. Why is it that you seem to have ridiculous timing? Exasperately, the leopard conceals his stack of papers before sighing. There's more fatigue than there is any shred of anger. A small part of you feels glee at the notion that this might be something you can tease him about later. A coincidence, or maybe you're just not as elusive as you think you are? A friend of mine does mention how I'm obnoxiously eye-catching. You hum in response to and keep any following comments to yourself. Sliding over to his desk, you attempt to catch a peek at his work. Contrary to whatever argument or denial he may spew, there's a stack of textbooks, an inkwell, and a scrawled over parchment. Idly, you allow yourself to ponder over what he might have intended on doing. Despite it being blaringly obvious, you realize Sirius as as honest as he is pig-headed. He draws circles into the dark, into the dark, into the desk, hovering ever so closer to the serious figure, and are surprised to see he's actually gone back to scribbling notes, albeit on a freshly torn piece of parchment. So, if you're not studying and you're just looking over your notes, could it be that you're having a trouble in a class? His hand clenches around the quill, and you note the slight wrinkle of his face. There's no trouble. I could ace anything if I set my mind to it. Is that so? Yeah, I'll be know I used to be privately tutored by one of the finest. You have him back into a corner, yet he manages to announce something so proudly. Curiosity piques your interest, and you take a seat on the desk he's working at. Here he stares up at you with wide, perplexed eyes, but simply moves his workspace out of your sitting range. Do you need something? Are you that starved for attention? He smiles toothfully back at you, the most familiar expression you've associated him with. So, offer to tutor him is a plus one. It does require low intelligence, though. I think two should be enough. Offer to him, I don't have enough intelligence. Dang it. So, I'm gaining nothing from this meeting. I should have done more stuff before trying to do this, I guess. Because the thing that he likes teasing. And this seems like it might be more teasing. I don't know. I guess I'll just do that. Your immediate response is one far too greedy, and you know it. The words hang on your lips, but to Siri, you're merely quivering in silence. He does glance at you periodically as if waiting for you to say something appears right off in the form of idly turning pages. You feel embarrassed and play it off fully by brushing some hair back from your face. Too bad. A little time passes and you idly wonder how many minutes are left until class begins. You know that the courses he's been taking notes on are a good few too many, and you're surprised that the physically oriented Siri would be interested in such a broad spectrum of academia. Cryptozoology, history of magic, magical linguistics. You've never seen him in these classes, so why would he be taking notes on them? Perhaps Sirius was even a bigger tryhard than you thought. He stacks the glass of the papers and separates them into different piles, the likes of which you presume to be associated with their respective classes. Finally done? Yeah, how are you liking your classes? I like them just fine for the most part. Why? Are you considering a study partner? No, I just thought I would give you some notes if you miss ever missed out on class. Oh, boo. Not really subtle, are you? Despite the slightly con condescending words, he chuckles. If I'm subtle, you won't pay attention or understand what I'm saying. He laughs again, this time with even more mirth. You're not the first to tell me that. Either way, you should just appreciate how generous I'm being. You swallow a dryness in your throat as you witness Siri begin to gather his things to stand, 
A sign that he is likely to disperse again. As much as you want to vie for more of his time and attention, there isn't much you can do without coming off as too desperate. He's noted your behavior numerous times and he's made fun of you for that. Well, the very least you can do is help him pack his things. The very moment this idea springs to your thoughts, you're quick to begin compiling his books together. But on second thought, it's finally impressive how he's able to carry them all. Maybe you should just watch him do that instead. Siri seems appears surprised by your actions, smiling to himself a little and mouthing a breath of thanks. It's nothing. I almost feel guilty for accepting his gratitude, as he can feel the weight of shame and guilt hampered down as he deliberately pick up his things at a languid pace. Though you could argue we're actually interested in the con content of the writing, you're pleasantly surprised by how intricately calligraphic Siri's handwriting is. A small odor of ooze and ah slip between your lips, and again you fear you discover something special, something secretive. For someone with such scarred, damaged hands, this writing is very beautiful. It's almost like a poet or an illustrator, someone who has wielded the pen for many years. Though it might have been rude of you to look over his work, Siri doesn't seem to mind. He's even taken his own time sifting through his papers. For a moment, you can pretend the joy of relishing in the other's presence is mutual. Chaos, are my linguistic notes that interesting to you? Hm? Oh, no. But I, I am surprised you write so pretty. What gives? I told you if I put my mind to something, I'd ace anything, didn't I? Your cheeks puff as you pout a little. That, you can't just say that like it's a legit answer. It's true, though. I just write often, just like I sometimes cook. At this point, why are you surprised? The leper's eyes avert almost suddenly. Having gathered the last of his things, it looks like he's thinking about something. These are just menial things anyone should be good at. Cooking, handwriting, reading, things that I have to learn growing up, so nothing really impressive. That's not true. Any talent is good, that doesn't mean they're any less special, and a lot of people can be horrible cooks. Though you are bent on encouraging him, your eyes catch on the cover of a very intricate, eye-catching, leather-bound journal. There is no text on the cover, and it's hidden just out of reach, but after dismantling Siri's myriad of textbooks, he reveals hiding place. Does it belong to Siri? Siri prattles on about cooking or something or another, but you're distracted by the authenticity of this raw hide cover. Bearing the journal in your hands, you can tell it's very old, very worn. Slips of papyrus peek from between crinkled pages. You almost mistake it for some aged tome he's probably checked out of curiosity. When you flip open the front cover, you can see it in scrawled, uneven handwriting. Serious. It looks like a child's handwriting. You're about to flip to the next page when the journal is snatched out of your grasp. You blink and look up to see Siri's panicked expression. Uh, sorry, I didn't know that was yours. You're good. My bad for leaving it out and almost forgetting it. Rising heat stirs in your body and your cheeks, but this time is a remorseful flame, one that flares on your face and beads at your eyes. You feel you've crossed something really personal. Sorry, sorry. As if equally sharing in the weight of your growing guilt, the leopard sighs, and surprisingly enough, he reaches out to comb your hair back. His fingers are warm where your skin touches, and you can't help but lean into the man's touch. What you assume is a tender crust, but still, selfishly indulge in it. It's just a journal. I always wrote in it since I was little. Siri weaves your bangs from your eyes, and his fingers tilt your head upright. Before you know it, your chin and cheeks are cupped between his fingers, and he's staring at you fiercely but not unkindly. Stop looking so sad. It was just... A bodily reaction to grab it. So, I'm the one that's sorry. Your words are ash in your throat, but you understand his intentions. Frantically, you nod and feel both relief and disappointment when you let go. Honestly, I think I'll just die of embarrassment if you were to see, so... Too bad, no peeking. Unless you want to pry for my cold, dead hands, that is. Understandable. But tempting. And a wee bit morbid. On that note, I think study time is over. I'll have to see you later, Chaos. Classmates begin to file in. And you realize he's skipping a class. Again. Ah, so quickly he had begun to gather his things. And he paused a moment to stare impressively by how easily he's holding all those books. Yeah, see you later, Siri. He leaves and you feel a bit fuller despite your stirring emotions. As if, even though he'd left, you'd gained something irreplaceable in return. The TA brushes past your desk to deliver handouts for the lecture. Who are you? You look familiar. A strange chill runs down your back as you feel something that is not quite right. Hmm. Interesting. I'm literally an hour into this. Why is this dialogue so long? 
Oh, it seems like there's only one more meeting. It says it cannot be done in class and going to Forest Field Garden auto starts competition. So I guess go to lunch with him and then do the fifth meeting so then I can speed around Thursday and Friday probably. Spend some lunch with Siri. By the time we take a break and choosing the luxurious outdoors, you resign yourself to the serene company of nature at the seat of a tree. The breeze feels cool and smells fragrant with intangible scents, both reminiscent of distant flora and mayhaps an alchemy monstrosity somewhere within the conservatory. It's strange yet comforting, and you question if there's anywhere better in your present company as your eyes shut at the fringe of a drifting sleep. Ah, uh, something hard falls in your head, and your attempts to sleep are interrupted. Hello? I look around once more, but the nearest students are too busy mingling. Pursing your lips, you cozy back up to your beloved trunk before the pain strikes you again. Angrily, you search for the aggressor, and a cracked acorn grazes, at, grazes your fingers. If you're a squirrel, show yourself! You've had about enough of those pesky rodents, tossing away their acorns all willy-nilly. You think as you toss your acorn back far into the distance. I'm not a squirrel, but our terrors are fluffier. Oh, Siri? The voice comes not far, or wherever you threw your acorn, thankfully, but rather above. Your gaze slips and you meet eyes with not a handsome lancer, but a beast decorated in a dappled coat and even fluffier tail. Ah, that is Siri's voice coming from that snow leopard's skin. You tilt your head at him in response. If snow leopards were capable of expression, perhaps you'd have an easier time reading him. But it's clear from the exaggerated draping of limbs over branch place, far too human-like to be fully animal. He smiles as his snout wrinkles, and he snores at your skepticism. The one and only, the Tomi. Is your magic the ability to sniff out handsome snow leopards, or is this just a pastime you're too good at? Ah, uh, maybe both. You're not sure. You think he's smiling. Thankfully, Siri sits upright and a cloud of mist like icicles and snow, a shimmering form transposes from feline. It's Siri the animal again. He's lying leisurely on one of the taller branches. You're sure if you try, perhaps you might be able to reach him. But before you can even think to, he... Have you thought about what you're going to do after you graduate? Hmm? I mean, I... You just started, but that doesn't mean you can't have a goal in mind. It's certainly a subject you're not used to. Too profound and almost too serious to associate with your idea of Siri. But he's been proving you wrong left and right, and you give him a response. Oh, this is actually the fifth meeting. I thought it was just a lunch thing. This is actually in the fifth meeting thing. So it says joining the war is plus one, and thing to take care of someone, somebody is also plus one. I'm just gonna say I'm joining the war, because why not? It's a morbid fate, but realizing the stakes at hand, your intentions are just. What effort is more important than the good of the many? I want to get stronger and likely join the war efforts. The animal is quiet at your response, and if he garners any opinion, it's for once unreadable. Rather, you feel almost small bearing the heat of the stare. Cold frost and dark foreboding violet. It feels like forever until the animal finally stirs, his ga dark gaze shifting away as he murmurs. If there wasn't a war, I wonder what else they'd have us be doing. Huh? In a world where there's no need for war, kids won't have to grow up without parents or, or fear for their future. They won't have to learn how to wield a weapon or master their magic because there's an alternative. That kind of world sounds nice. Yeah, but I wonder what kind of person you'd want to be like in that sort of world chaos. His words are announced sincerely, easily. The burden of his doleful stare has you enduring a different kind of heat. At the same time, how can a smile as bright as his look even remotely dismal? Without warning, Siri leaves from the branches. A cluster of leaves and half-eaten acorns rain upon you in its wake. May forgive him the moment he takes the time to brush off the debris from your person. Ah, uh, there he goes taking care of you again. It seems to be a common thing lately. Are you usually this way? He goes as far to even frame your hair back to what he deems appropriate. And you allow him for the sake of pretending to maintain your cool. Hmm? What do you mean? Building, perhaps? Comforting? Are you like this with everyone you just meet? His hand stills, and he retracts it before staring at you. Siri takes a step back and shoves that same hand in his pocket. Judging by his reaction, you wonder if it's a habitual, habitual thing. I've been speaking for way too long. I'm having multiple strongs. I can't read. Not after everything I just meet, no. I guess I, was, I guess I just like you. He furrows his brow at you in confusion and repeats himself. I like you, Chaos. Don't get the wrong idea. It's not like I'm going out my way forever and I just meet. That sounds too tiring, and I'm not anyone's saint. Y yeah. Still seems confused by your silence, but steals your feet by the tree trunk, unfolding a crumpled piece of paper you apparently smashed into his pocket. 
You take a moment for your cheeks to cool before filling the space beside him. Sneakily, your shoulders brush and your throat he doesn't seem to averse to you leaning just slightly in. Ever heard of personal space chaos? Never mind that. Oops, my bad. Yikes, that was embarrassing. Before you can take it personally, you wonder if he'd only react that way due to the wording you managed to peek from his letter. Rather, you know it's a letter because you saw it had been addressed to someone's mother. And then plus one says ask if it's for his mother. You steeple your fingers and form in the gr grassy seat beside him. This feels risky, but but when haven't you attempted to take risk with Siri? Basically it's nature. Haven't you realized what high risk, high reward meant by now? So, is that letter supposed to be for your mom or unsurprisingly, he immediately turns to stare at you with wide eyes, but you try your best not to feel bothered by them. It's okay if it is. It's not embarrassing to write letters to your parents. Some of us are very far from home. It's not that I'm embarrassed. Not about these letters, anyways. His brows downturn. The leopard gazes at the note for some time before he folds it more neatly, hiding it back into his pocket instead of allowing his weight to seep into the tree's trunk. I never know what to write. I always have trouble with it, too, even though my mom praises me. The animal's fingers squeeze around his temple, and evidently you know he feels discouraged. Maybe you've realized it. I don't have the best attitude, and I'm not the most polite guy around. When it comes to words, it's quick and easy. But when I sit down to think, it's hard to say what I'm really feeling. You mean it's hard because you want to say what you're really feeling, and not just a word vomit. Word vomit? Is that what you think I do all the time? You sometimes ramble on about yourself, and it's really self-important. He finally laughs at your response. It appears after conversing with you, Siri looks more like his usual self. In fact, he looks so much like his previous self, you easily recognize how he's definitely drifting to sleep. Anxiously, you pretend not to notice and sit rigidly at his side, but it becomes harder to ignore when the warmth of his form form begins to lean against you. First his body, and then his shoulder goes. You flinch as his head falls limply against the crook of your neck. Even the sleuth of his ear is brushed against your face. Speaking at the edge of your peripherals. Oh, he's definitely sleeping on you. Has so much time passed or is Siri just that tired and heavy a sleeper? Perhaps it wasn't that surprising given his precarious habits. Oh well. What could go wrong? Smile to yourself and relish in the silence, uncaring of any lingering eyes that might spot you. Hey, cute. Well, that's the fifth meeting out of five. So I think everything else is just going to be like generic tech stuff. And it says I need plus seven favorability in order to like get him. And I think I got that. I don't know. We'll just have to see. I'm just going to speed around the rest of everything else. I'm going to fight club. First rule about fight clubs. Don't talk about fight club. Second rule about fight club. You don't talk about fight club. Fight club. Fight club. Wednesday is now over our time for Thursday. Oh, again, I don't think my stats really matter right now, so I think I've finished off my route with uh, the Siri. Must need a speed run to the end. You're interesting, though. My name is Sinead. Huh. You're pretty. I'm just getting more characters that I probably have to do a route on. Fight Club. Fight Club. Fight Club. First rule about Fight Club. You don't talk about Fight Club. Second rule about Fight Club. You don't talk about Fight Club. Fight club, fight club. They need to now get through Friday. Plus, I got enough favorability with him because it says plus seven. And I have absolutely no idea how many I got, but there is only one way to find out. Fight club, fight club. Join fight club. First rule about fight club: you don't talk about fight club. Second rule about fight club: you don't talk about fight club. Fight club, fight club. Fuck the rules. You're here to fight. Hell yeah, you can put up a fight. Look at my strength of thirteen. You finally spar Siri and he leaves you feeling sore but fulfilled. Let's go! I beat his ass! We're in the home stretch now, boys. See if we get this man's. Hopefully it all worked out because I do not have the time to, uh... I do not have the time to redo all of this right now. I would have to wait until, like, a couple of days from now to do it. So I hope I actually got it. The long wait weekend has finally arrived. Saturday at 1 a.m. It's a little past curfew and you have no reason to be staying out so late, but there are no rules against doing a little overtime, pretending you're looking over some books. That being said, you definitely had not expect to fall asleep mid-study. You stifle a yawn and attempt to make your way over to your quarters, but a soft pensive sound in the distance causes your blood to coil. Hello? Your voice echoes singularly into the distance, 
and even if you squint your eyes, you are uncertain of what shadowy figures run him off. The lack of response leaves you in slight trembles. You decide to simply push on ahead, with much haste and strength that your legs allow you. Oof! The figure stands in your way, solid, hard, almost like a brick wall, yet you open your eyes, and even in the darkness you can distinguish his distinctive figure. Dappletail whips energetically in the way, white as the pure snow, but his expression that turns to you is a little less bright than usual. Oh, Chaos, it's you. Siri. You're uncertain whether you feel relief that Siri you've run into as his arrival leaves you a chest rippling with palp palpitations, the likes of which only a spiral when you consider how late it's gotten. Shouldn't you be in your room right now? Loper watches you for a moment. Nothing, not even a smile. I don't listen to that role. Then what are you doing at this time of night? Night's the best time to do some thinking. Clear out your thoughts and all that. Haven't you ever felt that sort of urge when looking at something so beautiful? Yes, I understand what you mean. Ah ha ha ha. Nice when all the pretty stars come out in the moon, too. Exactly. The smile returns to his face. The commuted speaks monologues. So, Siri, you don't have to answer, but what are you thinking about? Lepper pauses in his contemplative contemplativeness. His eyes grow wide as you come into his focus. It appears he is deliberating, for you can see it in passing patterns across his face. Fear, bashfulness, fatigue. You may have seen many sides of Siri this past week, but this one? This might take the cake. If it's not too personal, I... At your persistence, Siri clicks his tongue, and he finished with the flash of his gritted teeth. You're sure his irritation has nothing to do with you? No, perhaps it was more directed towards himself. Once more, Siri's eyes glaze towards yours. It looks hesitant, logging, but his lips part again and you keep your own shut. Um, not very decisive with my words in person. Usually it's the wrong thing, and then somebody gets upset. Then I get upset because I didn't mean to upset anyone. Oh, did you get in an argument with somebody? I mean, this happens normally. I just wish I had more class, I guess. Even with you. Me? I wish I could tell you things I wanted you to know. Your throat suddenly feels dry. Knees weak. Cheeks fire. The truth is, there's something I want to tell you, too. You both share a look that transcends simple scrutiny. It feels as if you were scrying to understand the, the other's mind, as well as sort out your own tumultuous thoughts. It's a lot of big words. I am small brain. I can't pronounce stuff. I've been at this for almost an hour and a half. You clench your fist, lips also trembling, but then he chaos. Damn that slight smile of his. Too sincere and too honest to bear any wrong in this world. Come hang with me on the roof for a bit. It's getting late, but I changed my mind. I'll show the stars to you. Unless you'd rather just go back to your room. That's fine, too. Ugh, bring the kinder smile back, even if you like this haughty one, too. No, it's fine. Let's go to the rooftop. As if anticipating your response, Animal lets loose a chuckle. Effortlessly... He extends his hand out like a tether. After you. Gingerly, he holds your hand the entire way, and you're uncertain of his intentions behind doing so, for Siri had always been surprisingly caring. There's simply a point you're never sure of what he truly means by it, satanic or otherwise. You've graced his hand before, surely, grasping and passing, or simply against your will as he reached out for you impulsively. It's as tattered as it was since you first met him, large yet gentle, the callous skin having healed since when you found him in the infirmary. Such a daring character, you find you're always somewhere watching over, looking up at him. The both of you are yet again outdoors, the setting you're at this point certain he prefers. It's obvious then, under the gloom of the ephemeral night, that even someone as boisterous as Siri thrives in solemn quietness. He looks a little more like himself, like a weight's been lifted from his shoulders. As Siri releases your hand to stand near the railing, his gaze is cast adrift into the stellar unknown. The good thing about breaking curse with you is nobody's out there to bother you. Have you been caught by a professor before? Ha! If I have, I wouldn't tell you. Can't ruin my reputation. You are right, though. It's really pretty out here. Silent, peaceful. There's no auroras or frozen fjords out here. In fact, Earth is nasty, sweaty. If you ever visit Alterna, I could show you. If it's anything like Earth, Aurora's, I bet it's beautiful. Alterna's the magical counterpart to Earth. It's hundreds of times prettier, I bet. 
Though the conversation is one you define as rather sentimental, it can help appear your anxiety spike. In fact, theory going on about a tangent of the stars, as the stars lying claim in your eyes as well. You're dumbfounded, unable to keep yourself from watching the animal before you of obvious interest. You swallow hard and think to yourself, nothing ventured. Siri, since tonight's the best time to be thinking, and I trust you, can I tell you something? He looks at you with an expression that shares in your inquisitiveness. Yeah, what do you want to tell me? Your nerves rile up again, but you clutch your chest. Unse unseriously abashed. The look of shyness you face, Siri, with is one you've held back all week now. He looks at you curiously, but not unkindly. A voice screams in your head. Just do it! Just do it! So, so what I wanted to tell you is, a sound reminiscent of a sharp clacking interrupts your thoughts, and immediately stop to gawk at the interloper. Oh, it's her. There you are, Sirius, and this. A friend of yours? Not one I know of. It must not be that important. Uh. Out from the shadow steps a tall, evidently alluring young woman. You're uncertain of where you have seen her before, but you're sure if you had, you'd practically melt beneath the heat of her fiery vision. She appears tempered and calm, her languid and carefully practiced movements reminiscent of a graceful lioness on the hunt. But painstaking pressure that makes your throat grow taut, you're only mildly released by Siri's voice. He sounds just as surprised as you, but familiar? Alini, what are you doing here? Noticeably, he looks troubled, but shows no resistance when the woman hooks her arm around his, deliberately wedging herself between the two of you. Her smile is saccharine, the kind of sugary sweet that's sure to burn if you dare touch her. We start and end our days together, don't we? The specific spiteful taste tacked onto together, you get the feeling that she's attempting to exclude you. Shrinking back slightly, you move to Ciri's opposite side, closer to the wall, gathering the last sem semblance of your curse to tug at his sleeve. Whoever this woman is, you are going to... Uh -huh. And you are... Whatever honey smile you perceived her lips to hold suddenly becomes more sinister. As she draws nearer, the more pred predatory it becomes. Shattered by the fringe of her bang, she gazes at you with scrutiny. Your fingers twitch, curling and unfurling, and a haughty tilt is made of her chin. You can smell her like fresh embers and incense as she lowers her weight onto the wall. Not one, but both hands create a makeshift cage blocking your view of the one who holds your affections. There's a low rasp that rumbles in the back of your throat, and she lingers near her, her lips a faint brush against your ear. A sense chills down your spine, and her words seep with ominous intent. Be frank. I ask as a formality. You have pierced the soft hard tendencies of my predestined. I care not for your name. A sizzle is heard from her palms, an intense flash of warmth reminiscent of the leper's own aurora you previously encountered. The only reason I speak to you now is to give this warning. That man? Her glance shifts towards Ceres for a beat, but primarily she keeps her focus upon you and you only. Is mine. There's a ferocity in her statements, dominating your entirety without her laying a hand upon you. She pauses, allowing the words to sink in before she whispers. You do well to remind yourself of that. Alini, don't get violent. At least Siri intervenes, placing a hand on this Alini. Her face crinkles in a way that makes you feel smaller than you are before, as she faces you with a plaster smile. I, uh, I, eh, um, eh, what's that saying? When the cats are away, the mice will play. The wind narrows her eyes towards you, and you hear her whittling you down to nay, but a pile of ash and stuff she finally peels away. A flush of air finally fills your lungs. Though you seem more rat than mouse. Immediately you stagger away, having gotten the picture. No matter what form or fettered veil of frown you attempt to appeal to Siri, he appears to have his hands full. Rather, you wonder if he's always had his hands full. Instead, he seems more concerned of that woman at his side, and at once you realize she's the person who has truly occupied his thoughts all along. Envy and embarrassment seeps into your veins, but you'd always be just intruding. After all, had the signs been there? You were just trying to confess, but you skitter away, realizing it had all just been for your fruitless indulgement. Maybe in another world, another life. Or maybe you should try not falling for someone in little over a week. Serious success. Play with fire and... So I successfully got Siri, but I still got cock blocked. That's upsetting. That when... <laughs> when I successfully get a...
character, the official success ending is me getting cock blocked. What the fuck? It's like Alini's like special third ending supposed to be like all of us getting into a polyamorous relationship or something because she has her claws dug in a Siri. Dude, I wanted to get with Siri though. What the heck? I guess for the next episode, I'm just gonna go for Alini and then figure out the special third ending with her, I guess. Maybe it's a polyamorous relationship with the three of us. I guess I'm fine with that. But like, I had some interest in Alini, but after that, like, that's starting to dwindle a bit. I already said I was gonna go after her next, so... That'll be the next episode, I guess, then. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell notification to know when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Chaos out.